It is my great privilege to welcome back to Talk Nation Radio this week, Bari Sweeney. Bari is a member of the Board of Directors of World Beyond War. He is based in Ireland, but is often in Vietnam or in Italy. His background is in education and environmentalism, and he has taught as a primary school teacher in Ireland for years before moving to Italy to teach English. He has also taught a permaculture design certificate course for five years and has taught on World Beyond Wars online war abolition course during the past two years. Uh, also in 2017 and 18, he's organized peace symposia in Ireland, bringing together many of the peace and anti-war groups in Ireland. Bari is busy working now in Ireland planning uh, World Beyond Wars annual conference and uh, related rally. This is called No War 2019, uh, and we'll be talking about that and other war and peace issues in Ireland. Barry Sweeney, welcome to Talk Nation Radio. Hi, David. Great to be back. <clears throat> uh, great to have you on. Uh, interestingly, uh, just recently, uh, there was a a fire at an airport in Ireland caused by the U.S. military. Uh, what happened? Um, <clears throat> well, just last week on the 15th of August, a U.S. military plane caught fire. The exact cause of the fire isn't uh, clear to us yet, uh, but one thing we do know, the, there was a firefighting foam used in, the exting in extinguishing the fire the AFFF, uh, which is uh, also known as the Forever Chemical. Um, it's a chemical used to put out fires, but it has been linked uh, to uh, causing cancer. And it, it, it literally lasts forever. It leaches through the soil and contaminates groundwater areas. So that's a very dangerous chemical to be using. And that's right beside Shannon, the River Shannon, uh, which is the largest river in Ireland. So you're talking then about contaminating Irish wild salmon and fishing stock, local businesses, and uh, really a far-reaching, very dangerous type of situation. And then the people of Ireland have not been told anything, right, in terms of uh, what was used to put out the fire uh, or, for that matter, what weapons were on the burning plane. Uh, no, no, no. There's been no details released. Uh, the Irish government doesn't feel the need to uh, check what's on these planes. <clears throat> it, it's only by the persistent work of Shannon Watch uh, and others uh, getting through the Freedom of uh, Freedom Information Act. Uh, they find out a little of what's going through Shannon Airport. The, the Irish government uh, tell us very little. In fact, as, as you know yourself, a few years ago, David, you met the Irish ambassador to uh, America in Virginia, and you asked her something along the lines of how can Ireland justify facilitating uh, war crimes when they're a neutral country? And I believe her answer was something along the lines of if Donald Trump says it's legal, it's good to go. Well, I, she said, you know, the highest authorities, and I interpreted that as Donald Trump. Uh, uh, he's supposedly the highest authority around here. Uh, but but this, this airplane, like these thousands and thousands of other U.S. airplanes that land and take off from Shannon Airport in Ireland, uh, was headed to the Middle East, right? The, the, the main objection of people in Ireland to these planes is not actually the damage they may be doing locally at, at Shannon, right? Well, the damage at Shannon uh, really is more of a potential damage. Last week was, the, I think, the, the first incidents, uh, although I'm not 100% sure, of AFF being used. The potential, of course, in Shannon is that it's not a military airport. <clears throat> military airports are designed for military cargo. They're designed for accidents. They have reinforced runways. They have reinforced hangars. You know, if, if, if there is an accident in a military uh, airport, then the soldiers should be protected within their reinforced concrete structures. This is just a civilian airport with glass fronts, like every airport where passengers sit and look out the window and watch planes coming and going. So like the potential is that with a more serious accident <clears throat> where bombs actually explode, 
that glass front is going to be lifted straight off and every civilian in there, whether they happen to be Irish or tourists coming and going, you know, there's lots of Americans who come here to Ireland, lots of tourists from all over Europe. They're all in grave, grave danger. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's a danger that is just completely unacknowledged by the, the, the Irish government, that they continue to let this risk be run every day of the week, multiple planes every day of the week. But there, then, but there's also objection, is there not, among at least some in Ireland who are aware of what's going on, to the fact that these planes are on their way to wars. Oh, absolutely, yes, yeah, yeah. These planes, like I say, Shannon Watch track these planes very, very carefully. You can go to their website and see exactly where they're going next. They're going to Afghanistan, they're going to Israel, they're going wherever. You can see they're going to active battle zones with active battle troops in uniforms, with guns, armed. You can see them walking around the civilian airport. And we know that these, we know that pal the, the conflict in Palestine is an illegal conflict. You know, how can that be going through a neutral country? The majority of the people in Ireland, when we have uh, polls to, to, to find the public mood about Irish neutrality in Shannon Airport, it's always overwhelmingly against the use of Shannon Airport uh, and uh, most people want the our neutrality to be respected uh, again. Yeah, well, this is typical of the U.S. military's use of bases all over the world uh, and is why we're uh, using this location uh, for World Beyond Wars annual conference, uh, No War 2019, which will be live streamed and, and groups and individuals uh, are planning their own events around the live stream and around the screening the videos that will be produced immediately after. But what are, what are the plans uh, for people who don't know for this conference and for a rally at, at Shannon Airport demanding the U.S. military stop using it? Yeah. Well, it's, it's on the almost the 18th anniversary of the Afghanistan invasion. It's the first weekend of October in Limerick, in Limerick City. The conference is on in the Great Southern Hotel, which is just beside the Rahim roundabout for, for people who know the area. Um, so it goes on for two days. It's the Saturday and the Sunday. There's going to be a mixture of panelists uh, and talks given where there'll be questions and an time for question and answers as well as there's going to be um, participatory uh, workshops um, and on the Sunday uh, more panelists speaking followed on by a rally at the airport and a peace camp overnight where there'll be an open mic um, session where people if they want to read poetry or they want to talk or they, they want to sing but we get to know socialize and network in a slightly more informal situation as opposed to sitting at the conference and, and listening because people have lots to say on these things people who come to conferences really want to get involved and they don't generally just want to sit and listen uh, and have uh, things drummed into them so we think that the sunday the more social aspect of the sunday is an important aspect of it uh, yes, indeed. And so who will be some of the speakers and what will be some of the topics and, and the, the workshops? Um, well, uh, obviously you yourself are coming, David. Our, yeah, I'll our, be there. Our four-time uh, Nobel Peace Prize um, nominee. Of course, Mairead Maguire is coming, who has won a Nobel Peace Prize, very well known here in Ireland uh, herself. Um, and there will be other members from World Beyond War, some of the chapter leaders from different parts of the region. We have Pat Elder coming, who does a lot of work on the shared connection between militarism and ecological destruction. So I'm really looking forward to hearing him. We have um, some representatives from, the, the, from Iran who are going to be talking about uh, refugees and the migrant crisis and, and the whole series of uh, different, some of the topics uh, uh, we have uh, looking at, we have an entire panel looking at Ireland and neutrality and the state of Irish neutrality with the, the, in connection with the EU and the militarism of the EU. Um, we're, <clears throat> we're starting off, in fact, on the Saturday, looking at nonviolence and pathways to peace. <clears throat> that is the title of the, of the actual conference, Pathways to Peace. 
that we're actually looking for you know ways to move the world from militarized uh, based security to um, other non-militarized ways of keeping ourselves safe so we're going to be looking at different strategies different places have used successfully we're going to look at some of the issues of you know how to abolish war um, and then the workshops from all those talks, the workshops will be directly related to that. We have a workshop on divestment, so divesting from the war machine. Like in Ireland, this is slightly old information. We need new research to be done, but there is 3 billion euros made in Ireland every year from making microchips for uh, weapons used in Tomahawk missiles and, and other stuff. Uh, you know, this is the, a neutral country who professes to not be involved in wars. You know, how can we have three billion euros washing around in the country? So we, we want more accurate information on who exactly is producing the, the chips. You know, we would like to have companies have ethical uh, investing, ethical uh, products that the that they, ethical customers. Um, you know, so that's one particular workshop. We have a workshop on youth activism and getting young people involved. Uh, here in Ireland, we have in the high school system, uh, the first of the three years is, um, it's a very free year. They don't have to co cover much of the curriculum. Most of the curriculum is covered in the, the second and the third year. So this first year is called a transition year when the students are like 15, 16 years old. And principals can put in any courses they want. Um, you know, so like getting a, a peace module into secondary schools, we think would be a great thing. Uh, you know, so we'll be looking at other ways of getting youth involved. There's a workshop on closing bases. Now, I know Shannon's a particular case because it's not actually a base. Yeah. But, you know, but most bases, if you're talking about Ramstein or you go down to Italy to Verona or uh, South Korea or Japan, you know, they do have bases and how do people mount a successful campaign to get a base out of their area considering the, the damage they do to local environments. Um, and uh, we also have a workshop on using music to build the peace movement, which I think will be a great uh, workshop. I'm very excited about that. That's, uh, I believe, being run by Music Without Borders. Yeah. Um, and then we also, because it is the 18th anniversary of the invasion of Afghanistan, we have a specific workshop on ending the conflict in Afghanistan. Uh, Maya, Ev Maya Evans is running that workshop and uh, the, the full list of um, panelists and all the details for the conference can be found online um, at uh, worldbeyondwar.org slash no war 2019. And it's really, it's a fantastic, um, it's a fantastic agenda and people should really go check it out. And if they're in the locality, I know there's live streaming and I know people will be organizing things in their house, uh, little private parties while it's going on. But if people can come and they're in the area, Limerick's quite well located, you know, Cork's a hundred kilometers away, uh, Galway's not even a hundred, you know, so within an hour from Limerick, there's a lot of people who could make it to the conference and we would absolutely love to see as many people as possible come along for the weekend. Uh, yes, we would. And it's, uh, and it's a beautiful place uh, to visit. Uh, I should also say at worldbeyondwar.org, there's a petition that we started, Barry, that uh, people have signed around the world uh, telling Ireland to get the, the, telling the Irish government uh, to get the U.S. military out uh, of Ireland. Um, and uh, I, I'm curious, as you're spreading the word about peace and ending war and recruiting people to, to come to events, uh, how do people in Ireland respond? Are they, are they aware that the U.S. military uses an airport? Do they care? Do they tell you that war is just inevitable and, and uh, human nature and nothing you can do about it the way so many people do in the United States? Um, well, Ireland has a particular history. We have a, a good long history of violence ourselves. We've been down that road extensively. Um, we know how futile violence is at the end of the day. The tit for tat nature of they did this, we respond, then they respond and over and back. It can just go on forever and ever and ever. 
we know that violence is not the way to get to uh, any decent long-standing resolutions. Anything that's born out of violence or the, the, the point of a gun, well, you might get some signatories right there and then because they have a gun in their face, it's going to fall down quite quickly, like the Treaty of Versailles, Versailles after World War I. You know, that's, that, that, that's a nothing treaty. There has to be real reconciliation, you know, real courage, leaders in the community who stand up and, and, and realize that that is just not the way forward. So there is that knowledge in Ireland, but there's also a lack of awareness how complicit we are in American wars. We think, to some extent, we're not involved, we're doing nothing. You know, but for, for almost 10 years on the US Department of Defense website, the Irish flag was there in the coalition of the willing, you know? Yeah. Uh, and any fundamentalist group who kind of thinks, so, oh, well, let's see who can we you know, do a little uh, attack on next, they could look it up and go, well, there's a legitimate target. They're facilitating our suppressors, you know. So there's a great understanding that violence is not the way forward. And yet there's a, a, a little bit of blindness about how deeply involved we are and how much we are willing to go along with um, violent, illegal activities. And then when you tell people in Ireland that what the Irish government is doing with the U.S. military, uh, how do they respond? Uh, they're not happy. They're, they're, they're not happy to hear it, but it doesn't come through the mainstream media. So uh, they, they're just not really, it's not really aware. You know, the awareness isn't really there of what's going on in Shannon Airport. You know, hundreds of thousands of troops have gone through there and they're not going on peace keeping missions. There is not a soldier in any army in the world who's ever been taught to save a life. They don't know how to save lives. People who save lives are heroes. Uh, these people are not going to save lives. They're not going to be heroes. They're going to assist in carnage and slaughter in, in wars that we know are illegal and that are not fair fights, that are poor people who have nothing at all against gargantuan armies. And it's, it's, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah. When, pe when people realize the extent of our complicity, they get quite upset. Um, uh, but it's, it's getting the information to them because the Irish media, no more than the Irish ambassador to America, they don't want to upset the uh, apple cart. You know, it's, yeah. it's business as usual. I think it was the Irish Times, if I remember right, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that wrote a big article about our two friends, uh, Tarek Kauf and, and Ken Mayers, who uh, got arrested for protesting at Shannon Airport. And the whole article was about how they liked the prison and how they, what they thought of the prison. And there was barely any mention at all of what they had been protesting. I mean, it seemed, it seemed like a trick the New York Times would have pulled. I, I guess the Irish Times has the same sort of agenda. Uh, that's it, yeah. So it's not, that it's, they're not, it's not that these things don't come up in the news, but it's always spun so that exactly we talk about how great the Irish prisons are. The Irish people think, oh, aren't we great? We're nice and friendly. Even in prisons, we're nice and friendly. And we go home thinking we're such a great little nation. You know, it's just, it's just spinning. But if really anybody bad stories. Why, why were these two guys in prison? What were they protesting? They, they couldn't have found it out from reading that article. No, you wouldn't have known. You would have no idea. Well, no, they, they were here protesting the, the, the use of Shannon Airport. They, they are here to help Ireland uh, reestablish its, its uh, neutrality, to have its sovereignty respected. And, you know, they're veterans for peace, oh, and now they're prisoners for peace. They're, they're being held here in Ireland. We don't even know when they can go home. We have no date for their, their case. Uh, right. uh, they're, they're just here being held by the Irish government. They're not in prison, but they're not allowed to leave Ireland. Not allowed to leave Ireland. Yeah, their passports have been seized. Yeah, and we tried, uh, as you know, we tried with several companies uh, to put up billboards uh, in Limerick and in Dublin and around Ireland uh, saying no more U.S. troops in Shannon Airport, uh, and it was strictly forbidden, and we got one of the companies uh, to agree, and we're now putting up billboards uh, advertising our conference, but without a word hinting at anything like no more, you know, no more troops for wars through Irish airports. Uh, somehow that's not, 
permissible speech. Uh, yeah, that was uh, a bit of a shocker to me, to be frankly honest. Uh, now that we have watered down the message and just focus on uh, come to the conference and that's, that's okay, the billboard companies will put that up, but any negative talk about America is just clearly not allowed. Now, you look at these companies, you look at their, 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 their list of, of what you can and can't say, they don't indicate that anywhere on the website, but when you contact them and try to get them in, <clears throat> anything that criticizes America is not allowed. Yeah. You well, know, it's, the, it, this is a problem we're running into around the world, not just in Ireland, uh, that uh, anything that's for peace or justice or making the world a better place in some way uh, is, is labeled political, even by companies that put up actual election campaign ads for candidates, which you would think would be political. Uh, whereas ads for, ads for, you know, fighter jets, which, you know, nobody who rides the Metro in DC, uh, who isn't a member of Congress is, is going to buy a fighter jet. But, but ads for these weapons companies are not political. Uh, I mean, this seems to be a problem that, 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 that's increasing around the world and Ireland seems to be going right along with it. Which is a real, real shame, David, because Ireland could be a leading light for peace in the world. We have um, at least good long-standing peace at this stage. <clears throat> it's always, there is still tension, even now with Brexit, you know, the, 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 the um, paramilitaries are using that on both sides, you know, the, 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 the Irish or the IRA sort of guys are saying to the young villas, look, they're, they're talking about dividing our country. They're talking about putting a wall in our country. You know, we need you again. So they're out recruiting young villas. And, yeah. the loyal, and the loyalists on the other side are terrified that in fact this might cause a united Ireland. You know, so they're recruiting on the other. So like, while there's no real increase in violence right now, there is an increase in activity by these uh, illegal military groups. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Ireland has a chance to, to, to continue to build on what we've built through very hard negotiations, very tough days. People had to put differences aside, sit down and, and begin to deal with the reality of living with each other, living with your neighbor, you know, uh, and not just destroying each other. There's only that, that's a zero uh, sum game at the end, you know, so. Um, it's very saddening to me to see Ireland kowtowing to uh, militaristic nat uh, nations uh, when we know we know very well that that is not the road to go. Well, it does seem to me that Ireland is a leading voice for peace in some ways, and Maureen Maguire and everyone who was part of making peace uh, in Northern Ireland and, and now part of trying to keep it. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, it, wouldn't it be wonderful if Ireland were an opponent of, of war and militarism uh, and, of, and of U.S. Uh, US empire? It would be fantastic if Ireland could reestablish its sovereign uh, its sovereign rights. It would send a message to other countries in the world that they too can do the same thing, even if you're a little country, that you can say, "No, we don't want to be part of this." And you know, once one starts going, it can become uh, you know a, the domino effect of lots of little countries just saying, "No, look at you, big boys want to do it." You know, we're not involved. We're not facilitating it. We're out. And the, the tide can turn. Yeah. Well, I'm very glad that World Beyond War will be having its annual global meeting, conference, and a rally uh, in Ireland. Uh, we've had them in the past in Canada and in the United States. Uh, and I think this will be a good, uh, uh, a good step toward uh, building the movement to end all war in, in Ireland and in Europe. Um, what, what can people do to to learn more, to spread the word, to uh, promote No War 2019? Uh, well, they can certainly go to the website. I'll, I'll repeat it again. It's uh, worldbeyondwar.org uh, slash no war 2019, where you'll see a full list of the agenda for the weekend. 
I think coming to the weekend, if you can, would be a wonderful way to learn about the most up-to-date position in different situations. <clears throat> like you take it, the militarization of Europe at the moment, uh, the PESCO, the Permanent European Standing Cooperative, uh, whatever the O is. Um, we have been told we must increase our military budget uh, to six billion. I, I know that's nothing in comparison to America. Uh, but like our, our military budget at the moment is one billion, you know, so that's a 600% increase. Now, yeah. I've just arrived home there uh, last week and I see that we can't give a five euro uh, increase to pensioners because we don't have the money. I see that there's nurses striking because they don't have the money. I see that there's problems in teaching and education. Everything is a price. Every time they talk about anything, we need to improve the water systems. Well, there's going to be water charges. Well, how come there's never a price for war? How come there's never a price for death? You know, how can we just let this stuff go on uh, willy-nilly with no, no oversight, you know, uh, and no repercussions for these types of things? So, like, I think it's very important people come to the conference. If you can't come to the conference, these videos will be live, live streamed on Facebook or subsequently put up on YouTube, where you can see on our YouTube channel, World Beyond War on YouTube, you'll be able to watch these videos and get up to date because, you know, that's eating. The military is eating out of life services, services that give life, you know, cutting subjects from curriculums, closing hospitals, reducing nursing numbers. How can we never talk about, you know, reducing the military or why is it just an automatic that, yeah, we'll increase that and cut everything else? Uh, Personally, I would prefer everything else. <laughs> I'm with you. The, the deadliest weapon on earth is is the budget, is the is the pocketbook. It's moving the money to the wrong thing. We've been speaking with Barry Sweeney. Barry Sweeney is a member of the board of directors of World Beyond War. He will be one of the speakers uh, taking part in No War 2019 coming up October 5th and 6th uh, in Limerick, uh, and there will be a rally at Shannon Airport. And uh, you, can, you can come and you can stay for free at a peace camp. You can stay at the hotel. You can stay at many uh, affordable places to stay. And you can stay some extra days and uh, see beautiful, beautiful Ireland. Um, the website is worldbeyondwar.org. The conference is at worldbeyondwar.org slash no war 2019. Uh, Barry Sweeney, thanks very, very much for being on Talk Nation Radio. Not at all. Thank you very much, David.